in the Big East Digital Network Studios. Very interesting and good week for Big East Hoops and its teams that maybe we didn't expect coming into the season. St. John's, the Red Storm, a marquee victory against Miami, and a lot more of the breakdown this week. Yeah, the Red Storm had five score and double figures in that one, and I think that that's the biggest takeaway from Joe Tartamella's team, is that they're getting offensive balance. They've gotten perimeter shooting as well, and that trademark Red Storm defense has challenged teams well. St. John's only allowing just over 64 points per game. They challenge teams defensively well. They're the team that stole the headlines this week, and we start with them as we break down our five Big East women's basketball points of the week. And there it is, 2-0. and oh. And look, your top 10 in the RPI. This is a team that people did not expect to be at the top of the conference when it came to women's basketball this season. No, but they have that defensive pedigree. And for St. John's, the question was, losing Aaliyah Lewis, the star point guard, how could they manage ball movement? And as you can see here, they did just that. They've done just that throughout the season, and they've had good guard play. Hoppy, the freshman, has added a great burst. Well, I think you alluded to it earlier, John. You can't replace players like Aaliyah Lewis and Jade Walker by just subbing in two more players. It's been by committee, and it's been really effective to earn victories for this team early in the season. And it speaks to the coaching of Joe Tardamella, able to get an offense that has established some consistency here in non-conference play. All right, point number two as we wrap up the Big East women's basketball week that was Villanova. They cracked the top 25 poll for the first time since 2004 last week. Now up to number 22, Wildcats. Keep it rolling. What a win over Princeton. That's a really well-coached Tigers team, and Villanova pulled it out. Kelly Jaycock continues to be a star for this group. And Villanova's doing it the way they always have. Efficiency on the offensive end of the floor, getting high percentage shots. Look at the ball movement here. Wow. With plays like that, this Villanova team is not going to leave the top 25 anytime soon. And really, as you take a look at the landscape that's unfolding in the women's basketball conference here in the Big East, is Villanova the, the front runner right now? Well... I still think that Marquette's the best all-around team in the Big East Conference, just in terms of experience now, one of the best junior classes in the country, their offensive balance and the pace. But I must say that I am really impressed with Villanova and the clash of styles when the Wildcats face off with DePaul and Marquette. The difference in Villanova this year is they now have that consistency and experience that they did not have last year. So Adriana Hahn, another year older. She knows how to manage in these situations. That's why I think that Villanova can test these teams for a conference title. I still think the most well-rounded team is Marquette. Well, you mentioned Marquette, the Golden Eagles, going for back-to-back -back wins against Big Ten opponents. And really, the conference as a whole has done really well against those football power schools. They already really thrashed Wisconsin, 88-65. to At Michigan, Wolverines are number 24 in the country. But if they play like they did against Wisconsin, that's when Marquette is at their best. Natisha Heideman with a season-high 26 points in this win. How about the sweet dish here? Alizea Blockton able to deliver not only with points, but eight rebounds in that performance. And Marquette, they own the state. They do for this year, definitely. And then you go on the road, a tough place to play in Michigan. They draw really well. Number 24 in the country. You know, is that the kind of the marquee win this team is looking for to solidify how good they are on paper? It is, and I talk about being the supreme team in the state. Well, Green Bay was able to get the win over Marquette, but for the Golden Eagles, Jay, it comes down to ball moving. And I've talked to Carolyn Keeger about this before. Her team is ultra-athletic. They've got the explosiveness that you want, but you've got to be able to share the basketball. And she's been looking for, it's not so much a selfishness thing, right. it's a matter of just pure strategy and executing that. So for Marquette, they go to Michigan, and their toughness is going to be tested. Defensively, at times, they can fall into some lapses, but they're so effective in scoring the basketball, and they can overwhelm a defense. They need to do that tomorrow, and they need to do it with their dynamic guards. You talk about upcoming games that will present a challenge to teams in our conference. How about the slate? that Doug Bruno and the DePaul Blue Demons are about to encounter. That's our point number four this week. Look, whenever you play Gino Ariema, 
and a really good Yukon Huskies team. It's going to be a challenge. And then on top of that, you have other challenges. You're on FS1. That's a it's going to be a tough task. Yeah, national TV on Friday, 7 o'clock Eastern, FS1. The Boo Crew back at it. Should be exciting at Wintrust Arena. It's the stage you want if you're the Blue Demons. But then I look at another storyline, and this was getting a lot of national write-ups. Creighton and Drake battling to a four-overtime wild one. Crazy. A uh, crazy game. And you know what? It's a game that you feel good about winning because you put in the <laughs> effort course. like that and then... To pull it out, <laughs> I told them before one of the overtimes that I'd <laughs> that's, that's a really great. good one. Yeah. That's a really good one, and the national reporters all over it as well. I know Doug Feinberg, Michelle Vopel, this one got a lot of pub. And Audrey Faber in her hometown of Des Moines putting on a show. Really cool. And uh, this is kind of what Creighton needed. Because it's been an up and down year. They've battled tough. They've had injuries. But to go and for Audrey Faber in her hometown to get that victory in four overtimes, I think that's the boost this team can take uh, and kind of spur their season on. They need Jade Owens back, and they're going to get her back here down the road. But this is a Creighton team. They're also very effective under Jim Flannery in just being who they are, and that is valuing the ball, and they do a really good job of that. They're normally a low turnover team, and then they guard well. So this is a team in Creighton that they sit in the middle of the conference, in my mind. But man, they're a tough out. It's very tough to get a win off them also in Omaha. And they're a team that is going to probably be playing their best basketball coming into conference. That's play. what he does. That's right. what Coach Flannery does. And Jay caught up with Audrey Faber, that huge performance in a four-overtime win that the Blue Jays will not forget. And now we're joined by Creighton's Audrey Faber, Big East Player of the Week, and deservingly so. Four overtime game, Audrey. We got to start with that. A career high went along with it for you, 34 points. In all your years of playing basketball, have you ever been a part of a four overtime game like that? I have never played four overtimes, and it was a lot. It was a lot of basketball. <laughs> How do you keep the mental strength along with the physical strength to not only play in a game like that, but win it? Um, I mean, it was just sticking together as a team, honestly. Um, you know, they were making good plays, but and we had to counter them. So it was just being locked in defensively, but then also just being patient and getting a good shot on offense. So you get the career high, you get the win. Would you say that was you know, up there with some of the best games you've ever played? I mean, yeah, it was definitely a crazy and fun game, just looking back on it um, now. Um, I mean, it was a lot of fun, obviously very intense, a lot of emotions um, with me being back home, but it was definitely a fun game and something I'll remember. Absolutely, and I know you had a lot of friends and family there watching you. It makes it extra special. Let's take a broader look at this season you're seven games in four and three what does this team need to do to become more consistent um I think just I think we just need to keep working together and just building up everyone's confidence you know um everyone just needs to be confident to take their shot on offense and then just keep working on team defense and rebounding and you know just limiting um the other team's strengths so I think it's just continue to work together and continue to understand each other's um way we play and your role has changed. You were a big-time contributor last year, but now you're a leader on this Creighton team. Take me through what you did in the offseason to prepare for this upcoming season. Yeah, one of the big things coming into this season that I wanted to focus on was just being more productive, you know, getting other people more shots and just getting more people um, kind of um, into the offense. So um, just, you know, trying to make good reads, you know, slow down on offense. That was a big thing, just making the right reads and just finding different ways to score and contribute to the team. Well, you've been leading by example, a career high 34 points, Big East player of the week, well-deserved. Before we let you go, give me the best Coach Flan impression you've got. Let me hear it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, well, usually he yells at me when I don't rebound, so it's kind of a high-pitched scream. It's like, Audrey! But that's about it. <laughs> awesome. That's a great note to end on. Audrey Faber, Big East Player of the Week, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Alter! <laughs> that's what I get. That's the high-pitched uh, scream. I get that multiple times a week. You're kind of like Kevin in Home Alone. <sighs> a little taller. Yep. Moving on. Okay. Moving on. Um, 
we were talking about DePaul and UConn. Friday night, yeah. FS1, Lisa and LaChina back at it at Wintrust Arena, an opportunity for the Blue Demons on the national stage. And this is a DePaul team that, again, they, as Coach Lavin says, they share the sugar. Man, they really, <laughs> they do. really score the ball. It's so tough because you go into this game and you think, hey, we feel good about the way we're playing, but UConn is just so dominant. And it is great that they're coming to Wintrust Arena. And boy, is that going to be a must-see matchup. Credit to DePaul, television. too. Credit to DePaul for scheduling that game, trying to be tough, going and battling against the best. But Gino Ariema, I mean, it, it's just too tough to break down over the full length of a game. Well, we'll see what happens. This is a critical stretch for DePaul, as they not only have UConn, but they have Northwestern, Notre Dame on deck. The Fighting Irish took UConn to the limit over the weekend, the right. Jimmy V Classic, and nearly pulled it off. So I give a lot of credit because this is what prepares DePaul for March. This is why they've gone to double-digit in a row uh, NCAA tournament appearances. I think it's 15 in a row. This is a program that has made going to the big dance a standard. And under Doug Bruno, it's been a great meter of success for them. And we got a chance to catch up with one of their stars. Yes, John Fanta. Early Ashton, in the week. Ashton, what's it like you had your season end last year due to an injury. How rewarding is it to come back and lead this team? Um, it's very rewarding. It feels great to be back out there with my teammates. Um, I missed it last year, but I just had to get through adversity of not being able to play with them. But this year, it's a, it's a dream come true to be back on the court again with them. Is there something that you learned from that time being out? Um, Coach Bruno always talks about visualing like the game with your mind even though you can't play with your body so uh i just had to like play the game with my mind like on the bench but at the same time still encouraging my teammates thus far this season you guys have scored the ball as you usually do very well what's behind the offensive balance um just spacing passing cutting moving uh spacing is a big deal with the office that we run uh for our screens that we set uh basket cuts um, just like little details, nothing really too big behind it, just details of, like cutting hard, uh, hitting the open player when they're open, um, and then knocking down shots when you get the shot. Six players in double figures for this team, and you guys have some players in new roles, Ashton. How have you tried to embrace maybe a leadership role for this group? Um, how have I tried to embrace it? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like being a leader is like, making your teammates better. So I try to like make my teammates better while I'm still trying to be aggressive at the same time. And going into Friday, the top-ranked UConn Huskies coming in. Ashton, I talked to a lot of players. I know the common response from all of you is, it's just another game. But national TV, a big-time game at Wintrust Arena, how do you balance sort of playing the top team in the nation with also being composed? Um... It's just like just going into the game without fear. I, like they're the number one team, of course, and they're a very good team. But you can't like be scared. They uh they like put their pants on the same as us. It's like just playing with confidence and having the trust in each other that we will able to, we will we will hopefully get it done. Let's go off the court. You get to take any celebrity role model out to dinner. Who are you taking? Where are you going? Ooh, that's a that's a tough one. Well, personally, my favorite player is LeBron James, so I would have to go with LeBron. <laughs> Mine too. I like LeBron. Yes. Um, where am I going? Um, a nice, like, steak seafood place. I like seafood. seafood nice. A lot, Surf so. and turf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I like that. seafood a lot, so probably, like, a steak seafood place. Give me some steak and shrimp. I might join you as the third member of your party <laughs> for that dinner. Okay. The dinner I also would like to attend. Favorite movie? Favorite movie? Probably Love and Basketball. Love and Basketball. Very good call. <laughs> one's on MTV mm -hmm. every yep. now and then. I'll see you flipping through. <laughs> Big time game against UConn Friday. What's mm -hmm. playing on your beats beforehand? Ooh. I see, I'm not a picky person, so I, I listen to like a song that's like real pumped up and edgy, probably. But I'm not like a big person, like artist or anything. But probably like a, like a big, pumped-up, edgy-type music <laughs> song. 
Who do you try to mimic your game after? Is there somebody that you look up to in the women's game? Um, Diana Taurasi. Mm -hmm. She shoots so well, and she knows how to get her shots off. She knows how to get open. She's just a wonderful shooter. I just try to be like her sometimes. Well, the national spotlight on the Blue Demons on Friday, and Ashton Millender leading the way for them. Good luck on Friday night, Ashton. Thank you. It's DePaul and number one UConn Friday at 7 Eastern time on FS1. Ashton Millender with the line of the year so far. We put our pants on the same way that they do. That is the mentality you got to bring into the game <laughs> when you're playing the number one team in the country, the UConn Huskies. Just for your information, we're also wearing pants right now. We are, yes. Just want to clear that out. <laughs> I've got to say, also, not too picky on what's playing in the beats. We're two very picky people. Yes, and who, who do you listen to? Billy Joel. Right before we hop on set, a little piano man, scenes from an Italian restaurant. Plays the garden once a month. <laughs> very picky. <laughs> right. What very a... picky. Well, I love, you know I love Joel too, but this time of year, uh, the Carpenter's Christmas album yes. is playing in my beats. Uh, we just were playing a little Bruce Springsteen. little Bruce Springsteen, Santa Claus is coming to town, Slay, Lo Slay Ride, Leroy Anderson. Yeah. Uh, all that stuff. Let's get to upcoming games in Big East Women's Basketball. Big East Big Ten showdowns aplenty. It is a huge week. Marquette at Michigan. Golden Eagles looking to get back into the top 25 with a win against the Wolverines on the road. Georgetown, a good test for the Hoyas against Minnesota. And then the big New Jersey rivalry. Seton Hall at Rutgers. Tony Bazella got to get that in-state win. Versus Vivian Stringer. It's like a movie waiting to happen at the rack on Friday afternoon. Should be interesting to see how Seton Hall handles a Rutgers team that's always tough defensively. Butler against Wisconsin, and then I'll draw your attention to St. John's and James Madison. We talked about the Johnnies earlier in the show. Really impressive, top 10 in the RPI. Joe Tartamella, quite frankly, having a great year coaching. Might be the best coach in the conference thus far with the product he's putting on the court, and he's going against his alma mater, James Madison. Yes, and RPI opportunities for Georgetown, facing Minnesota and NC State, both Power 5 conference teams, and that's going to be interesting to see the Hoyas take on those teams. Villanova at Temple in a Big 5 women's match, and then the Crosstown shootout, Cincinnati style, on Sunday at 5 Eastern when Xavier takes on Cincinnati as conference play is only just a couple of weeks away, it's but the crazy. first of 17 national TV broadcasts in the Big East. It tips off on Friday with DePaul hosting number one UConn. Lock into that one. Thanks for joining us as we wrap up the Big East women's basketball week that was. John Fanta, Jay Alter, we got a great slate for you. Get to at Big East WBB on Twitter. Follow along this weekend. We got a lot of fun content. And uh, we'll be back same time, same place next week to break it all down. No doubt. And tomorrow, Big E Shootaround is back at 3 Eastern. Jay Wright, Jay Alter, maybe another Jay. Stay tuned for all that. So long from New York. That's a tease. See ya.